Hello, yeah. Okay, so people often ask me where I get my ideas from. Well, ideas and inspiration are absolutely everywhere. For example, we can make a transmission from these two dog toys. Can't we, boy? Hey, can't we? <laughs> So of course I turned to Tinkercad and drew this up and for those two rings what we're going to use is this thing. It is obviously a dog toy, it's a solid rubber ring, the kind of thing that the dogs love to chew and they love to tug on <laughs> it's great fun for them and you get them in a variety of sizes. This is three and a quarter inch, this is six inch. I'm going to make this size because I just love things big and chunky and this goes on this. This is like a toroid cut in a disc and obviously I've mounted an axle on it which is eight millimeters and the dog toy just slots on there. There we go and we have two of them. They go into this cradle here. The cradle's printed and it's got some bearings in it and of course they are skater bearings which are 22 millimeter outside diameter, eight millimeter inside diameter and seven millimeters thick. So there's four of them, two for each of these supports and of course they go straight into there. So on this we put a washer between the ring and the bearing, put it on, another washer and then there's this stop here. So it's caught between two washers. Those washers press on the inner race and make sure that the bearing turns really nicely. That plastic stop has a bit of glue on it to hold it in place. Now these pillars, what you need is a couple of these. These are 12 millimeters by six millimeters. So they're 12 millimeters outside, six millimeters inside, they're four millimeters thick and we need two of them because the depth of that is eight millimeters and they just slot in there and they're going to be where the balls go. Now you'll notice there's two of them. It will work with just one, but what happens is it splays that way. So if you put two in there, it keeps everything nice and true. So we need two balls. Now I was going to use a um, dog's ball, but Instead, I printed this with an eight millimeter hole and you can see I put a bit of eight millimeter bar in there because that sits in that housing right there like that. There we go. Sits in the housing like that. That housing allows it to spin in that direction because what we need is a bearing in there. So we've got a space for a bearing and this bearing is 12 millimeters by eight millimeters by four millimeters and that slots in there. And that's the ball unit together. It's got a bit of six uh, mil pin in there. It's got a block on the end to stop the ball coming out and the ball slots in there. There we go, like that. Now this would work with just one ball, but what will happen is it will splay. So of course we have another position and we need to make another ball. The other thing we need to do is hold them roughly together and give it a way that we can turn both balls in the same direction. And for that, we'll use a parallelogram. Okay, you'll find two beams like this with larger holes and they drop on here and here and the job of those is to pull the balls in as they're trying to be forced out. There's one goes on the top and one goes at the bottom of the cage. There are also two extension bars like this. One end goes into this, which is the back of the parallelogram and it goes in like that. Then the other one, which is the lever we're going to operate, which is the front of the parallelogram, it goes in like that. So when we line these up, if we move that lever, that will move by the same amount. Oops, sorry, move by the same amount. So these go into here. And you're gonna make sure that that is 90 degrees to that so that when that's moved, it moves that. Now we take the bars with the smaller holes in and you'll just get some six millimeter pegs in there and they slot in that section there. We slot the other side in and that's our steering well, parallelogram. When I move that handle, both of these move in the same direction at the same time. Okay, so if I hold my steering and I turn the handle of the blue wheel, we've got a one to one ratio. It's turning as quickly as I'm cranking it really. If I move this lever that way, 
this will really slow down, even though I you know, keep turning at the same speed. <laughs> and then back again. We go a continuously variable transmission made from dog toys. Now it's a bit of fun to do it from dog toys, but this is extraordinarily useful because, of course, we can put a feedback mechanism in there and we can keep a motor turning at a constant speed, irrespective of how fast the input is turning. In this case, the blue wheel, and that has obvious benefits if we want to stick it in a wind turbine and control it so it doesn't burst into flames. Anyway, I uh, have of course put the files into Thingiverse, so anybody is welcome to this and make whatever use they want out of it. I think it's an awesome project and we can of course make it smaller, make it bigger, do whatever you want with it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> and please do remember to like and subscribe.